So on the instructions for this Tamiya um, Leopard i4, it shows a couple of photographs of uh, the tank out on manoeuvres and it's got some foliage on the front of it, on the one photograph. And I thought because it was sort of just green, I thought it would be nice to try and have a go at trying to make some, some well, cut off trees or something like that, just to sort of break the sort of tank up a little bit. And these are my sort of experiments. Um, and what the video is about is how I go about making these. I've tried to make it as sort of easy as possible in as much as things you've probably already got, um, except for say one or two things. So uh, let's have a go at doing it. So I've brought this, look, they call it sort of hobby wire, but it's not floral wire. And I got this from Hobbycraft in the UK. So it's 250 millimeters long and um, it's 0.71 sort of diameter. I believe that's the diameter uh, millimeters. And it's got the actual, um, the gauge there, uh, 22 gauge. Um, and this is the sort of basis of the stuff we're gonna sort of use. So put it against the ruler and that comes out to 250. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually chop it um, in the middle. So half of this is 125 or thereabouts. Doesn't have to be exact. So I've got the two pieces there. And what we do is we bend them this is when we're going to need some pliers and then we twist and I tend to make that about 300 mil so it's about 20 at the moment so that's about 300 i'm oh, so sorry 30 30 mil <clears throat> and then we have a fork so start twisting, you break them into two, so there's your fork, and then twist it a bit more. And I tend to do that for about just 15-ish, something like that, 15 mil. And then it splits again. I mean, none of this has to be an exact science. And do the other side. So, and I mean, the, at the moment that's just sort of two dimensional, but you can, if you look at that, you can sort of move it. So that would be like sticking up and whatever. Depends on how you want to sort of fix it to your tank or any sort of foliage, because you can make trees sort of similar to this. <clears throat> so that's the basis of the, the main branches. And next we're going to make sort of some tiny branches sort of just coming off. So I've been foraging in the garden and found this on the floor. I've got a sycamore tree in my garden. You can see that these are generally connected to sort of the ends of things. So you get the dark colour and then you start to get all the fresh shoots. So we're going to try and Mimic that as best we can with the scale that we've got. Branches. I need some smaller wire, and down in my shed, I found some old electronic sort of wire. You get loads of this in computers, bell wire, all sorts. So what we need to do first is to strip it. So I've stripped it, and it's just what, just just about an inch, 250, sorry, 25 millimeters long, and this is going to act as our sort of branch. Let me cut.
on the left. So I'll split it into two strands, two lots of strands. It's sort of roughly about three, four, something like that each. Because you want it to be smaller than the uh, the main branch that you've got. And it's just a matter of twisting them round. And then we just twist it and connect it in place. Sort of like that. I mean, we're going to glue it. So and what you can do is you can split it again, if you're careful. It's a bit finicky. But you can sort of twist it again and sort of get off shoots. So I'm going to do a bit more of that and you can see the end results in a minute. So I've done other branches, they are a bit fiddly, <clears throat> but I think this is the worst, well, the hardest bit to do. They do spin, but the glue will sort them out. Uh, and as you can see, you can sort of alter them as well, all sorts really. And what we need to do now is we just need to put have something ready to go on the end. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll put those things on the end when the actual glue is on. So I don't normally buy fancy products and I don't think this is particularly that fancy. It's like a latex glue. I got it from the local DIY store, it's about a fiver. Um, the reason I'm using this is I've tried PVA and it seems to dissolve to nothing really. You don't see a sort of body. Clay is really fiddly. Um, you could use sort of decorating sort of cork if you if you wanted to, maybe water it down. But I just found this is sort of so quick and it's sort of obviously been, been latex. You've got that sort of rubber feel at the end of it and you do get some decent sort of texture on it. So uh, let's try and use this and see what we think. I have to say it smells horrible. I don't know if any of you use uh, Mascal by Umbra, it smells just like that. I suppose it's a similar product though, isn't it? I guess. I mean, you can super glue it in place if you want the little wires, but it just seems like an extra step. I seem to get the glue everywhere. So you can make any shape you want. I'm struggling a little bit doing this out of a, the phone camera. And what we'll do now is we'll just put something just onto the ends, just so you've got a little bit of small little branches coming off on the end. So I've just got one strand. I've just turned it in half. The strand was about 25 mil long and I've just twisted it together and got that fork. So while that's drying, looked at some leaves. So these are just from a garden. This is from sort of a Valburnum, I think it is. And this is from the Sycamore. And it's just really just looking at the colours and the sort of veins. As you can see, it's like a yellowy green. And now it's lighter on the other side. <coughs> um, 
this isn't so sort of yellow, but just getting a feel for the outside of it and just uh, how the best we can try and represent it. So it's leaves now, while that's drying, we just need to think about leaves. So as you can see, I've been having a play. So the first thing really is colours. So these are oil paints, which I've messed around with. These are sort of Tamiya, if it was going to be like a copper sort of beech tree. Um, you know, I mean, it depends where we're going to do the tree. Um, this is sort of European, the one I'm looking at at the moment. So I've gone for this, this colour for now, although you can sort of mix it up. Um, I mean, the other thing is you can sort of mix different colours together, but I'm just going to go for this. Um, this is, um, it's from, it's one of these daft kits, you know, these kits you get, you know, Bill, from the kids at it, and it's 117 Humbrol. No doubt there's uh, other equivalent sort of colours, but I'm just going to use that because it's readily at hand. But just use greens or anything, anything you want, really, light, lighter colours. Um, I mean, some of this looks a bit more jungly than um, sort of European. Um, so uh, the first thing we've got to do is get ourselves just a normal piece of paper. This is just a piece of paper that's out of a photocopier. And then I've just got my normal paint. I've got a bit of water to make it go a bit further if we want to. And really go around the sort of edges and just, just paint it really. Really else to sort of say, I haven't got much of this. Well, I think it's quite a nice colour. I don't know what kit it was from. It dries quite quick. That, that was the other thing using the oils. It took ages to sort of sort of dry. I just use them straight from the tube. I mean, if you look at a tree, they are different sort of shades. So I might use a different shade as well as this one. So, so I'll just do probably a bit more and then we'll do the next bit. So these are some of the different colors. I've got the one I quite like, Umbral 117. Ravel 39 Dark Green, I think I'll probably use that one. That hasn't come out too well. It's Humbro 155. I do a lot of my American, sort of a lot of the early sort of 172 stuff was done in that. These are Model Air. They haven't come out very well at all. That one's not too bad. US Dark Green. Oh, you probably get away with that. Umbro 91. You can see how much I like that. I didn't put that much on. And that one is Humbro 30, which we've probably all got because it's on the Spitfire kit. Um, not sure about that either, that one. So I think I'm going to go for these two. And what I've done is I've painted them on the back so they're double sided. So the next thing we're going to use is this, uh, this cutter I've got for leaves. It's mm, I'm not sure because you've got, you've got four different leaves on it and that's not really good if you're just doing all of them from the one tree. So uh, I must admit, I do tend to mix them up a little bit on the on the on the, on the branches. So uh, it's just a matter of just putting it in there and just flicking the button. So this is why I've done it on both sides. So basically, put it there. And it cuts it out. Bit of a shade on it. That's the basic sort of leaf. So you just do loads of them. So I'll carry on with this. And I'll show you how I get on.
So it's dried now, obviously it's dry over 24 hours to be honest, we could do overnight. And you can see you can sort of mess around now and you can sort of form it the way you want and it's you know it's relatively strong. Um, it's sort of clear the way it sort of dries but you do get a nice sort of um, consistency on it and I think it will show sort of a nice texture when we've uh, sort of painted it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint it a base colour of dark earth. I'm just going to use Humbrol because I've got loads of it. Um, that's Humbrol 29. You could reuse Revell. Um, you might be able to use Tamiya or Vergio. Um, so let's paint it up um, and let's see what it looks like. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some good old Citadel, some Agrax Earth Shade. I have watered it down a little bit because it can be a little bit strong. So we'll see how it gets on. If we're not happy, we can always put another coat on or something. So let's have a go. So this hopefully is just going to just settle in some of the recesses and just give it a bit of sort of contrast and a bit of depth don't want it to be too much so i'll carry on with this and we'll see how it finishes so this is the result of putting the agrax earth shade from citadel on you can see i, I did actually put another coat on it as well so i watered it down and it wasn't doing what i wanted it to do so it's collected a little bit in those areas which we could always overpaint a little bit if we had to, but I don't think it's going to matter. But if you look at what I'm perceiving to be the sort of branch and stuff, I think it's come out sort of all right. So next thing I'm going to do is just do a, a very light brush of um, a sort of a Humbrol sort of brown. I don't know what its exact tone is, but it's a Humbrol 70. So it's almost a bit clayey. So I'm going to do a very light brush dry brush of that over uh, and then we'll do the next step so remember to get as much paint off as you can with the dry brush and it's really just want to give it a little bit of contrast It's a bit heavy there, but that's going to be on the other side. So that's that bit done. So the small sort of branches are going to be quite, quite sort of new growth. So I want them to sort of look a bit like uh, saplings almost a little bit. So I'm going to use some yellow, yellow green from Tamiya. And then it's really it's sort of edges so 
just so we can blend. So I'm going to use some Vallejo old wood. Just give the idea of it being chopped. I know you can probably see the loop still, but it's a bit like if it's been broken off. So on a, a container, I'll just put some, a little bit of super glue. And then really, it's a matter of just putting the leaves from the container. Oh. Dip it in. Just glue it on. Just put it where you sort of want it. So I'll just put these on off camera in the end. They're quite difficult to try and put on the camera. But you can see the way you can start to sort of build it up and that's sort of one branch. Um, you can move the um, branches around a little bit as well. I'll do the rest of it and then we'll come back later and you can have a look, see what, what you think. So, so I've just finished gluing them on. You're looking for super glue grabs the uh, the leaf straight away because otherwise it can sort of twirl around a little bit but sometimes in the twirl round it doesn't really matter and so there's there's all sorts of leaves if you notice even if the the, the, the punch for the leaves sort of nicks something out you can it almost looks like it's for from an animal anyway from a sort of caterpillar or something so it sort of looks all right. You can mess around for quite a bit. You can see a little bit of the white, but uh, there's one more step which we'll have a go in a minute. The final thing we're going to do is just link the the stem to the sort of leaf with just using the Tamir X XF4 yellow green again. Um, so I've just done it on that one just to sort of try and just link the sort of two together just a, just a little bit. You can just add a little bit sort of edging if you wanted. <clears throat> So you can touch the leaves up if um, you put a bit too much yellow green on, but it sort of just gives a nice effect, just blending the sort of two together. And don't forget this is really zoomed in.
And then the other side, which would be like if you're standing underneath the tree. So I don't bother too much with that side. So let's put it on a tank and uh, see what it's like. Yeah. <sighs>